Hey guys, today we are gonna be taking a look at this. This is the NT68 from EpoMaker. For the most part, it looks like any other typical 65% keyboard, but it's actually designed to fit a very specific niche. So let's take a look at what separates this from other 65% wireless keyboards. But before we do that, let's see what's included and get the specs out of the way. Out of the box, we have the NT68, two short USB cables, one USB-A to C, and one USB-C, a drawstring bag, plastic support tabs for when you place this keyboard on top of a laptop, more on this later, extra keycaps to make the visual switch between Mac and Windows, a generic keycap and switch puller, and this, a magnetic cover that works similar in fashion to the ones used with tablets. It's meant to protect the keyboard during travel and allow you to customize the typing angle on your devices with the hopes of it improving your typing experience, but how well it achieves this is a bit hit or miss, but more on this later. The first thing you'll notice is that the NT68 has a case that's made up of a combination of ABS plastic base and an aluminum shell. This is a great way to keep things relatively light, reduce costs while adding rigidity, and the added side effect of dampening the pinging that is very common with full aluminum cases. With this keyboard being wireless, we need to charge it right, so this keyboard comes with a USB-C port that allows you to charge the keyboard and use it in wired mode as well. And this is where my first gripe comes in. The keyboard comes with two short USB cables, but they really needed to include a longer one as well, just to give people more freedom with where they place the keyboard if they prefer to go wired. To the right of this, we have the LED indicator. It shines blue if Bluetooth is active, red when the voltage is low, yellow when the keyboard is charging, and green when it's topped off. The last thing we've got on this case is the power switch. This, in my opinion, is a requirement on any wireless keyboard, so I'm happy to see it here. Unlike the GK68XS and its slightly awkward right aligned backspace, the NT68's layout follows a more traditional 65% layout, which is a really good thing but there's one really annoying quirk here. So this oversized FN key, perfectly fine if you're coming from a Mac ecosystem, but instead of allowing the user to swap this FN key with control, either in software or a hardware disk switch to truly support Windows, Mac, and Linux, there are actually two different SKUs of the same keyboard, with the only difference between them being the FN and control key location. I work with all three of these OS variants, so my personal compromise has been to remap the caps lock to control. This is something Linux users have been doing for a long time now and works relatively well for me. But the ability to remap these two keys really should have been included by default. Why even go through the trouble of producing and stocking two different products when you could just do it with one? In terms of switches, you can choose between a variety of Gatoron or EagleMaker's own chocolate switches. My keyboards are equipped with Gatoron yellows and browns, which are very well known at this point and are good options for users new to the scene, with both the switches and the stabs coming pre-looped from the factory. I haven't experienced a full keyboard with the chocolate switches yet, so I can't really comment on how these feel other than that they come looped from the factory with the most interesting one of these four options being the rose brown, which looks and feels like it's trying to be a panda variant. It has a 65 gram spring with an elongated bump, so hmm, very familiar. Switches aside, the NT68 sports hot swap sockets so you can choose to stick with the default options or swap in something completely different, which is what I will be doing. I really can't decide if I want to go with these mode switches or with the link switches from Glorious. If any of these look interesting to you and you want me to do a review on any of these, let me know in the comments below. The keycaps that come included are PPT and both of my samples had a nice texture. They're dice subbed and what you've come to expect from any decent set of PPTs. At first glance, the profile looks like it would be DSA, but they're actually GSA, which I think is unique to EpoMaker. Like DSA, the keys have a uniform height, which lends itself well to NT68's use case. The similarity in height allows the multi-angle sleeve to cover the keyboard nicely without causing any excessive slack or protrusions, but unlike DSA keycaps, the typing experience is slightly different. The surface area of the concave portions of the keycap is slightly larger, which I actually prefer because you don't have to be as precise on where your fingers land. I personally prefer Cherry and DCS profiles, so I'll be swapping in another set of keys that are also available through EpoMaker, just to make the typing experience a bit more comfortable since I'll probably be moving this keyboard around the house more than I will be taking it out, at least anytime soon. 
Also, I want to make it very clear that while these look like GMK Nightrunners, they are not. And until there's a round two, if you want to support the original designer, Blind Assassin does have another project underway called GMK Nightshade, which I will link below. This came out during my hiatus, so I missed the group by, which is a shame because I just love the theme, especially this desk mat. Hopefully some of you guys out there were able to pick up a set, and if not, there may be extra stock, so keep your eyes out for that. The RGB on the NT68, like other Evo Maker devices, is quite good. The LEDs are bright, and the keyboard comes with a good variety of RGB animations that you can easily adjust and cycle through using the pre-programmed keys. Nothing new or groundbreaking, but it does look really nice if you're into RGB. Of the two color options, if RGB is your thing, definitely go with the white since it really lends itself to the LEDs, making the colors look so much brighter and smoother. Oh, and stick with the onboard RGB controls because the software used to configure this keyboard is barely passable. It does have the capability to configure what you need out of this keyboard, but it's not intuitive at all, so it can be really confusing for newcomers. And even when you do get used to how things work, it can be really tedious to use. I've already covered this in detail with my GK68XS review, so if you want to learn more, check out that video. One thing EpoMaker has been able to improve on is where this software is hosted. In my GK68XS video, the number one question was, how do I even get this software? Now, instead of having to browse sites in a foreign language or scour Reddit or Google Drive for questionable copies of the software, EpoMaker now has it available on their site directly. In terms of connectivity, you can of course attach the keyboard via USB, but you also have the option of Bluetooth 5.1 that allows you to store up to three independent devices. The switching between devices is seamless and over the last month of using this keyboard, I have not experienced any dropouts of any kind. Power on this keyboard is a 1900 milliamp hour battery, which Epo Maker claims will be able to last up to 80 hours with the RGB LEDs on and up to five weeks with it off. I got about three or so weeks of heavy use varying from eight to 14 hours every day before I started to see the low voltage LED. Okay, now that we've covered the main specs, let's talk about the gimmick. Earlier in the review, we talked about how this keyboard was designed to fit over a laptop's integrated keyboard, but that's not the only trick. Thanks to this little origami folding cover, it also allows you to not only protect your keyboard when you're moving around, but also allows you to reposition the keyboard and prop up your mobile devices. Evil Maker markets four different positions, and I found a fifth pretty useful one as well. So let's quickly go through each of them and see what works and what doesn't. The first one is actually one of my favorites. It's amazing if you do a lot of work on an iPad Pro, or in my case, a Samsung Tab S7 Plus. The S7 Plus has a mode called Dex that essentially repackages Android in a more traditional desktop experience, which has been really useful in a pinch. Combine that with a physical keyboard like the NT68 makes this the perfect combo. What's also nice is that if you just shift the tablet over just a bit, you can drop your phone in as well. This next position is called working standing up and honestly, I don't see it. This position is incredibly uncomfortable to use sitting down or standing up. They probably didn't know what to do with this one, so they made something up. This position attaches the NT68 to your MacBook right on top of the integrated keyboard and does so with magnets. This is how I've been using the NT68 the majority of the time and the position I think most people will use. Keep in mind that this will work for sure on MacBooks, but with Windows laptops, it's definitely hit or miss since the dimensions between manufacturers can vary quite significantly. This position is appropriately called laptop scent. This one is surprisingly useful and I use this from time to time when I'm working on the kitchen counter if I feel like changing up where I work. Now Evil Maker shows this guy using the keyboard on top of the MacBook, but for me this typing angle is just way too aggressive and it's better just to leave the keyboard flat on the surface that you're working on. So the last position is something that Evil Maker doesn't showcase, but I found myself using a lot. Earlier I said I generally use the NT68 on top of the Mac, which leaves the cover free. What you can do is fold it up like this, and now you have a spot nearby to place your phone, your tablet, or even a portable external display, which have become increasingly more common. If you take advantage of apps like Duet or Super Display to turn your iOS or Android device into a second display, this setup is super convenient. So some of these configurations obviously work better than others, so you'll have to figure out which one works best for you. Evil Maker says that the typing angle of this keyboard can range between 6 and 15 degrees, and on paper that sounds really good, but the issue is the angle relative to the height. 
More often than not, your wrists are just floating, which gets uncomfortable really quickly. Another thing I don't like about this keyboard has to do with its cover. It's made of this soft touch cloth material that picks up everything. If you actually use this on the go at the library, cafe, restaurant, or any public location, this thing will soak up all the grime left on the table. I took mine out one time and it's already dirty. Really annoying, but anyways, before we wrap up this video, let's do a quick sound test. So there you go, the NT68 feels and sounds better than I had originally expected it to. So I think for the target audience this keyboard is going for, we'll find this keyboard pleasant to type on. But the only thing that might throw off new users is the GSA keycap profile since the typical office keyboard is some variation of Cherry. The NT68 goes for 95 US dollars, which is a bit on the high side considering you're approaching the price range of options like the Cara and the Aurora. But remember, if you're already thinking about enthusiast oriented keyboards, you're clearly not the demographic for this thing. The NT68 is marketed as the keyboard you want if you are a working professional that often travels or if you work for extended periods of time on your laptop and mobile devices, like a college student, for example. This could be a product those people have been waiting for and fulfills a need where not many options exist. Well, that's it for today. Like, subscribe, it really helps me out and I will see you guys next time. Bye.